Hello, this is my first attempt to provide to you with a series of simple elementary mathematics lectures. This is the first episode. I'm going to present to you a simple geometry problem, which is similar to the Japanese temple geometry problems. Given a right triangle with angle B being 90 degree, find two circles with equal radius R that are tangent to each other, and also each circle is tangent to psi AC and the AB or psi AC and the psi BC. What is the radius R of these two circles? The existence and the uniqueness of these two equal radius circles will be discussed at the end of this lecture. So let's assume that these two circles do exist. Now here is a very simple uh, solution for this problem. Let's say the center of these two circles are U and uh, W. The radius of these two circles is R. From the center of each circle, drop perpendicular to each side. Therefore, because the radius of this circle is r, the distance from b to the perpendicular foot is r. By the same reason, from b to the perpendicular foot of w to psi ab is also r. And then let's connect u w, the distance between u and the w is 2r, of course, because these two circles are tangent to each other. As a result, the distance between these two tangent points are also 2r. This construction gives us a right triangle u, v, w, where Angle V is 90 degree. Because the size of right triangle ABC and the size of right triangle UVW are parallel to each other, we know right triangle ABC and the right triangle UVW are similar. So let's say the length of UV be U, the length of VW be V. Therefore, we have R here, as we mentioned on the last slide. The length between this perpendicular foot to the tangent point is U. By the same reason, the length from point B to the perpendicular foot from W is R and uh, V. Because of the similarity of triangle U, V, W, and the triangle A, B, and C, we have U over A, the length of AB is equal to V over B, the length of B, is equal to 2R, over C, the length of psi AC. This equality is shown here. Now, by solving U from this one and this one, we have U equals 2R times A over C. And V is equal to 2R times B over C. 
So we represent V, U and V by the use of A, B, C and the, the radius of a circle R. Now, on side AB, we have learned that the length of this segment is U, U the length of this segment is R. So the remaining segment going from A to the tangent point is A, the total length minus U plus R. Because of equal tangent theorem, the length of A minus U plus R is equal to from the point A to the perpendicular foot here. So this segment has a length of A minus U plus R. By the same reason, the length of this segment would be B minus V plus R. Due to the tension length, the segment here and the segment here are equal. So what do we get? We represent the length of C as the sum of this segment plus 2R plus this segment. That is A minus U plus R plus 2R plus B minus V plus R. Simplify this portion, we have C equals A plus B minus U plus V. Now, because we have already represent U and V by R, A and C, we simply plug U here and the V here. This is what we get. C is equal to this. By plugging in U and V, we have this. And simplify this portion, we have this. That is, this portion is equal to 2R times A plus B over C. Now let's move this term here and the C to the right hand side. We have this. Solving R, we have this. That is, we divide both sides by C over A plus B and also divide both sides by 2. We have the value of R, this. Now, if A is 3, B is 4, C is 5, we have the equal radius R equals 5 over 7. Now we have our solution, which is quite a simple. Then we should answer the question. Do the two circles exist and unique? The answer is yes. Now let's take a look at this diagram. The blue circle is the largest circle that is tangent to all three sides of a right triangle. That is the in circle. Now the red circle is the circle tension to this side and this side and also tension to the in circle. So in this case, the blue circle is the largest circle that is able to tension to both sides. And that the red circle is the largest circle that can be tensioned to two sides and also to the in circle. So if we grow the rest circle and at the same time reduce the sizes, reduce the size of the blue circle and yet maintaining the tangency between the red and the, the blue circle. So as the rest circle grows larger and larger, the blue circle reduces the size to become smaller and smaller. Notice here, the size growing of the red circle is continuous. It won't be jumping from a gap from another gap. So it 
grows from here and becomes larger and larger. At the same time, the blue circle reduces the size continuously. So this is the continuity here. As the radius of the red circle increases, the blue one decreases continuously. And furthermore, this change is monotonic. That is, the red circle grows, becoming larger and larger. The blue one reduces size, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And this monotonic, the red circle, as the red circle increases, the blue circle reduces. The red circle would not increase and then reduce in this sense. So here is our conclusion from our observation. As the radius of the red circle increases, the blue one decreases continuously and monotonically. So what did we learn from this observation? Notice here, when the red circle becomes larger and larger and larger, it would be increased to the size of the inner circle. At the same time, the size of the blue circle reduces until its tangent to these two sides, at the same time, also tangent to the in circle. The change of sizes is continuous and monotonic. So let's represent it on the coordinates. Initially, the red circle is the smallest, while the blue circle is the largest with the radius of the in circle. So let's put a point here. The radius of the red circle and the, the radius of the in circle. At the other extreme, when the red circle becomes the largest, that is tangent to two sides and set at the same time to the in circle, we have the circle being the in circle. And at the same time, the radius of the blue circle is the smallest. So as the radius of red circle increases, the radius of a blue circle reduces. So we have a curve like this. Why I said it's a curve, a continuous curve? Because the radius change is continuous. Why is this curve going down from this highest point to the lowest point? Because we just argued from our observation that this change is monotonic. So we have a curve going from a top point to a lower point. Whether this curve is linear doesn't matter. Now, Let's prove the existence. We have learned that the, the relationship between the red circle and the, the blue circle is a continuous curve and a monotonic going down from a high point to a low point. Now let's draw a line y equals x. This line y equals x divides the first quadrant into two area. This area has y, x larger than y. This area has y larger than x. Of course, x larger than y would include this point. And uh, the area y greater than x contains this point. Now from calculus or whatever you have learned, this line divides the first quadrant into two separate areas. And we have a continuous curve going from this, quad this area to this area. This continuous curve 
must intersect y y equals x. The intersection point has x equals y. As a result, we have a radius x, which is equal to the radius of the blue circle. In this way, we proved that the equal radius case does exist. Now let's move to the uniqueness. The uniqueness means this line only intersect the curve once. Now what if this line intersect the curve more than once? So this line going down in order to set intersect the line y equals x again it must go up. And when it goes up back to this area it must go down to get here. Therefore the curve must intersect this line multiple times. Is that possible? No. Because we have argued that this curve is monotonic, monotonic, it must go from high to low continually. Now, if this curve going down and going up and going down, this curve is no more monotonic. Therefore, we also proved that the intersection of the radius curve and the line y equals x must be unique. In this way, we established the uniqueness and existence of these two circles. Now, let me raise an interesting question. A couple of YouTube videos and uh, articles published on the, on the web suggested that this is one of the Japanese temple geometry problem. It does show some similarity with those Japanese temple geometry problems in terms of finding the radius of a circle that satisfies certain conditions. We will present some of this problem in the future. But what is Japanese temple geometry? It refers to the practice of carving geometry problems in a verbal way on wooden tablets as offerings at the shrine or temple. This is an example of Japanese temple geometry. It's all written in Japanese kan kanji. And here is a second example. You should be able to find many such problems at this site, www.wasan.jp. These two shown to you are probably reconstructed. But there are so many original presentation available at this site. So after searching these two very well-known books on Japanese temple geometry problems, I couldn't find the problem I just presented. Maybe I missed something. If you are able to find this problem from other sources, Please let me know. Thank you. And this first appeared in, in early 90s. This book published in early 2000. These two books are very well worth to be read. And there is another one called Inductive Calculation Techniques of Sanjo School. So that's the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and see you in the next lecture.